so I will provide you a link to to video recordings and I think ah, and what else um, to, 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 to. Ah, and I would like to send you mm, just a moment an invite to uh, telegram chat if you'd like to ask me questions outside our uh, lectures or classes then you are free to do so in uh, telegram okay i think that's about okay just i will present myself my name is boris demishev uh, i'm teaching stochastic calculus econometrics and time series uh, in high school of economics uh, you can find me in person in s5 uh, 117. What else? You can write me, you can ask me questions in Telegram, and uh, I think what we will have, we will have uh, some home assignments, and uh, the final exam uh, will contain two parts. The first part uh, is by uh, Kirill Alexandrovich Bukin about optimal control. I have uh, nothing to do with this part, uh, optimal control. And uh, my part is, uh, this is my part, uh, is about stochastic calculus. Stochastic calculus. And basically that's also your grades uh, will be composed. Uh, you will have one grade for the whole course, mathematics for economists. And I'm responsible for some home assignments uh, and the stochastic calculus part of the exam. Basically, that's all about the uh, grading part of the course. And I think we can go straight to the um, straight to the subject. Or oh, maybe one more uh, formal point. Uh, my policy is to keep open all past exams. So uh, just in five seconds, I will provide you a link with, to all past exams so you can start to practice. And if you know everything, you are free to go to uh, to see it or cinema. So uh, just a moment, I will provide you a link to all exams, all past exams I have sent. Uh, I have, uh, I will, post the link twice. So if you can solve all past exams, so the, my lectures and classes probably are useless for you. But if you open past exams and see something new, then welcome. Okay, basically I think that if you have any questions about the course, then please be brave and uh, uh, ask me your questions. But basically my part, some home assignments, uh, stochastic calculus, just a part of the exam. Um, basically that's all what I will grade. And uh, all materials, past materials are free. You can just open and uh, solve. Uh, how many home assignments are we going to have? That a little bit depends on the, uh, my abilities because now I'm preparing a, a linear algebra course for Coursera. So <clears throat> it's a little bit hard. Normally, I think uh, either, I think two or three, maybe, I, I think three, something like this. Uh, uh, we, will we have more lectures of optimal control? Uh, a question by Ruslan. Uh, as far as I know that the answer is no, but it's not my part. My business is stochastic calculus. So uh, uh, probably you will have uh, some office hours by Kirill Alexandrovich before exam, but it's better to ask him about optimal control. My part is stochastic calculus. So as far as I know, the answer is no. Uh, in one exception of uh, just uh, one um, office hours before exam, but it's better to ask uh, him directly. Uh, optimal control will be in the exam. Yeah, I think, yeah. 
Yeah, there are two parts, so you can look through past exams. Ah, okay, maybe there are some changes. Uh, okay, I will. Uh, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but <clears throat> okay, yeah, maybe there are some. Okay, you know more than me in that case. So my only point that I do home assignments and uh, exam on stochastic calculus. Okay, I will ask uh, Booking because this is uh, uh, something new for me uh, that the C optimal control is part of another guy. Uh, that's fine. Okay, let's start. So it's better to ask them. Okay, I have nothing to do with optimal control. All past experience that it was included as a part of the exam. Okay, I will ask and uh, tell you next week. But uh, my, my main idea that honestly speaking, uh, I have nothing to do with optimal control. Uh, but all past years um, that was organized like this. Um, okay, so Okay, I, I will ask Booking about the structure, but maybe, maybe so I, let's let's wait one week or maybe less. Maybe I will meet him today and I will post the answer in the uh, Telegram chat. Okay, so let, let's go. Let's go straight to the topic. Uh, so basically, our course structure will be the following. First, uh, I will uh, introduce. Uh, or maybe check your knowledge. I don't know um, yet your level of understanding, but I need uh, sigma algebras uh, and I need a conditional expectation of some random variable with respect to sigma algebra. Next, we go on to martingales. N not today, but the structure of the course. Next, we go on to uh, winner process winner process. Next, we uh, go to the um, uh, stochastic integral or ETHOS integral and uh, some main properties of this stochastic integral like uh, ETHOS lemma and other properties. Next, we go on to some stochastic differential equations and we finish by a short introduction just a very short introduction to some financial models. You will have a, a special course ded uh, dedicated to uh, derivatives, uh, but my part is uh, mathematics, not uh, financial modeling. So a little bit in uh, a small introduction to Black and Scholes model. Okay, so this is a big structure of our course. Sigma algebras, uh, we will use them to calculate conditional expected value with respect to sigma algebras or other random variables. Then martingales, winner process, also known like uh, as a Brownian motion. Brownian, Brownian motion. Uh, it is integral, it is lemma, so something like integral from zero to t uh, AU, D, W, U. It is lemma, stochastic differential equations, and short introduction to Black and Scholes model. Um, this is a main structure of the course. Let's go on. Okay. Hey, hey, me, me, me. Just. Okay, let's continue. Okay, first uh, topic, first big topic is uh, sigma algebra. Oh, we I need sigma algebra. The main, uh, first I will, uh, uh, what book would you recommend us to get? Uh, okay, I have a question. Yeah, what about books? Uh, I think um, there are, uh, the, the problem with the course uh, is uh, that the topic is rather hard from the mathematical point of view. And uh, basically we need to create a stochastic calculus in six uh, uh, weeks. 
uh, that's much better than six days. But uh, anyway, it's a very small amount of time. So the problem is uh, uh, mathematically, it's very uh, intensive subject. And I will not uh, go deep into measure theoretical aspects of uh, stochastic calculus. Uh, and that's why to uh, to uh, that's why to it, it's rather hard to find a one book that is perfect for the course. But I think uh, good choices are a book by uh, it has a funny uh, associ associations in Russian Zastavniak. Uh, uh, a book by Zastavniak. You you can remember the author. Uh, the Stavniak basic uh, stochastic um, stochastic processes processes. I think if uh, it's if I would choose one book that will be that it will be the book by the Stavniak. You may found also I think it's Paolo Baldi. So I think that's the first recommendation. So if you prefer to read one book, well, then. That's uh, a choice. If you would like to have more mathematical details, uh, so that's say one book. Could you recommend one book? Yes, I am. Yeah, the second one is Baldi. Uh, I don't remember, it's called as introduction or stochastic uh, calculus. So let me Google a little bit the exact title Baldi stochastic calculus. Calculus, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's stochastic. It's not introduction, but the stochastic calculus. Stochastic calculus. Uh, calculus, if you like more, more mass. Uh, if you like to go into finance application, <clears throat> yeah, Paolo Baldi. Uh, Uh, oh, well, uh, yeah. Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to have more uh, financial applications, then I would recommend either um, Shreve. That's Shreve. Uh, that's I think it's stochastic calculus. Yeah, Shreve also called. Let's check me the exact title. Uh, stochastic calculus for finance. Stochastic calculus for finance. Um, it's a big. Uh, these are big books. One's first uh, book and second book, and uh, so this is for financial applications. And I think uh, uh, Michael. Uh, still, I think it's Michael. Just a moment, Michael. Still, stochastic, stochastic calculus. Also, stochastic. Just a moment. I will write the exact name of the book. Uh, yeah, Michael Steele. Uh, stochastic. Stochastic calculus uh, and financial applications. So I think if I would like to, if I have time to go through one book, so that it will be the Stavniak basic stochastic processes. If you are strong uh, in uh, mathematics, then you can choose uh, Paolo Baldi. Uh, if you'd like to go on into quantitative finance, and that's your, so if you'd like to choose this field, so I will, I would opt for Shreve stochastic calculus or Michael Steele uh, stochastic calculus and financial application. No. Okay. Yeah. Now let's go back to sigma algebras. Sigma algebras oh, and, uh, without the S. Uh, 
Okay, uh, idea. First idea, because formal definition is uh, it just follows the idea. Uh, idea, intuition. Uh, we'd like to have a way uh, to provide uh, uh, knowledge, to describe knowledge. So idea, sigma algebra. Sig sigma algebra is a way uh, a way to describe uh, to describe information um, of a rational of a rational agent. So uh, the idea is to describe information we'd like, to describe what we know, what we do not know. Uh, and uh, uh, if we go in technical details, details. Um, so we just provide a list of all events. Uh, so sigma algebra is a list a collection, a list, a list of all events that uh, of all, uh, let's have more intuition first, and then I will provide, uh, obviously I will uh, provide a, a formal mathematical definition, but let's start with intuition and not with uh, uh, formalism. Okay, sigma algebra is a list of all events all questions, let's even say the list of all questions, because every event, basically just a question. Tomorrow it will rain, will it rain tomorrow? We can um, state every uh, event as a question. Okay, sigma algebra is a list of all events, all questions um, that uh, a rational, rational individual can answer can answer for sure let's provide an example let's provide an example and then after the example i will provide a formal definition don't worry because i know that uh, uh, a lot of you would like to have a formal definition wait a little bit Let's develop intuition first. That's my idea. Okay, uh, let's imagine that you uh, throw a die. So you throw a fair die. Um, so it's a, it's a fair die. You throw it once. So you, you have one throw. Imagine you, that you do not observe the outcome. Imagine that I just throw a die. Mm, I, don't, I don't have a die here, but okay, I throw a die. And you ask me just two questions. You ask me first question. Um, uh, let's denote by x. Uh, x is the result of the toss. Okay, x is the result. So the first question you ask me is uh, x uh equal to six and i provide you the answer i you have my answer i answer your question then you ask me uh whether x um, is uh, greater than three and i answer your question i answer your question and let's describe your information now. Uh, so what is sigma algebra? Is a set, a collection of all questions that you can answer now. So sigma algebra, so that is your information. Your information. You know whether x is six or not. You know whether x is, uh, uh, greater or equal than three. Uh, okay, and let let's collect uh, let's describe f. F is uh, a sigma algebra, is a set of all questions you can answer. The set of all events you can distinguish for sure. So the set of all questions you can answer, or the set of all events that you can 
um, that you are able to tell whether they have happened or not. Let me provide some examples to make our lecture a little bit more interactive. I will provide you two examples of events. A, X is equal to two. Um, oh, and the second one, X is uh, uh, less or equal than two. I have two events, A and B. Um, uh, can you for sure tell me, uh, knowing uh, you have all this information, so you have my answer, you have my answer. Imagine that you have my answer to the question, first question and the second question. And now I ask you whether X is exactly two. Uh, can you answer this question for sure or not? Or I answer you whether B has happened or not. Can you answer this question for sure or not? So my question is, do you know whether A has happened? No, not for sure. Uh, yeah, there are two cases. Uh, or, or maybe, uh, yeah, there are two cases. Yeah, right. I, I don't know who has answered, but the answer was correct. Yeah, not for sure. Because for example, if, I, if my answer was yes, so if my answers were yes, yes, yes for the first question and yes for the second, then you can conclude easily that X is not two, okay? Yeah? Okay, anyone? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, but if my answers to you were uh, no, no, uh, then uh, you are in doubts. Uh, you are not sure. Maybe it was one, maybe it was uh, two. Uh, so uh, you're, you are not sure. Okay. So that's why A does not belong to the sigma algebra of your information. Uh, yeah, let's consider other, because there are three uh, cases, uh, I, I also may answer you no, yes. Yeah, the answers yes, no are not possible. If X is six, then X cannot be less than three. Uh, so in this case, no, yes, you can answer that A has not happened, but uh, A, uh, so whether the event belongs to uh, the set uh, the, the collection of questions you can answer for sure. That's important, this for sure. That's for sure that is important in the definition. So sometimes you can answer, no is an answer. Yeah, you can answer, no is a good answer. But in this case, you are not sure. So this event A uh, does not belong to the sigma algebra F. But in any case, you can answer about the event B. Because if I answer yes, yes, has B happened in the first case? No, what happened? No. If I answer, if you have information from me, no, no, then you can conclude for sure that B. Yes. Happened. That B yes. Happened. yes, has happened. Uh, no, yes, um, then B has B happened? No, no. No. And in any case, you have enough information to uh, check whether B has happened. Uh, that, uh, anything may happen. You could have, uh, so you, in any case, your information is sufficient to answer uh, the question B, whether X is less or equal to uh, two. So in this case, B belongs to the sigma algebra, okay? So that's very easy. Sigma algebras is a way to describe information you have. Uh, in sigma algebra, you just list all events that you are able uh, to check for sure whether they have happened or not happened. Okay, the intuition is clear. Anyone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's go to formal uh, mathematical definition. So math f is a sigma algebra. f is a sigma algebra if. Let's imagine what can do a rational uh, individual. Uh, rational individual, uh, obviously, for sure, he can say that uh, uh, nothing has not happened and uh, uh, something has happened. Yeah, uh, that's uh, so trivial that it's even hard to grasp. So trivial that it's even hard to understand. Something has happened. Yeah, something has happened. First, uh, um, is very something uh, something has happened. So it means that uh, the omega, uh, the whole set of outcomes, belongs to our sigma al algebra. Nothing, nothing has not happened. So empty set uh, belongs to our sigma algebra. You can for sure answer that uh, uh, or to this question. And then you can do uh, some logical, some logical operations. So if you know that A has happened, you know that B has happened. So you can conclude that A and B has happened, A, A or B has happened. So you can do logical operations. So basically if A1, A2, A3, A4 belongs to F, so you know whether A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on has happened. You can do, uh, you can calculate uh, any combination of them. So for example, if you know that tomorrow it will rain, you know that tomorrow it will be less than 10 degree, uh, degrees of Celsius, then you can conclude that tomorrow will be rain and less than 10 degrees of Celsius. So if you know about event A1 and you know about event A2, you can combine them. You can make logical uh, conclusions if you are a rational individual. So uh, if uh, you have, uh, you know about events A1, A2, A3, A4, and so, A, and so on, then, then any, any event B that can be uh, expressed, um, any event B that can be constructed that can be constructed constructed from a1 a2 using what logical operations you know you know a uh, intersection you know union you know uh, you know uh, complement yeah you can take union, you can take uh, intersection, you can take complement, uh, um, countably many operations, yeah, countably many, let's be precise, countably, countably many operations uh, belongs to B, belongs to F. So basically, there are only two requirements for sigma algebra. First, you know about trivial events. Something has happened, nothing has not happened. And if you know about some events, then you make logical conclusions. And if you look in many books, if you open the book by Baldi, the book by Zestavniak, and every uh, book, you will uh, see that this simple logic is, uh, I don't know why. I don't understand why they first give the formal definition and then they try to explain why, why it's normal. Uh, so if you go to any book, you will see the following definition. F is called uh, sigma algebra. Sigma algebra. If, uh, uh, let's say, um, empty set belongs to F, um, 
if a belongs to f then complement belongs to f and uh, if a1 a2 a3 and so on belongs to f then union uh, of all these sets belongs to f so if you look in any book then you will encounter this definition basically uh, that one is easy to understand because what, what does it mean i'm rational i'm rational that means i know some trivialities that something has happened obviously if you have a thrown a die then something has appeared yeah uh, so i know trivialities and i can make conclusions um, so the second idea i can make conclusions and uh, in uh, book definition uh, because it, it it's always i don't know maybe it's a burbaki tradition but sometimes authors do prefer to state minimal requirements uh, necessary and sufficient conditions and if uh, you can take complements and unions then you can uh, describe uh, intersections like uh, complement of union of complements and so on so indeed this requirement that intersection uh, intersections and complements belongs to f uh, is uh, a little bit um, it's okay but uh, you can state less and uh, book authors prefer to state less that's equivalent to a uh, intuitive definition uh, okay let's provide Oh, I have a question. Uh, could you please t say why is x equals uh, two is not and uh, does not belong to sigma algebra? If we can uh, answer the question, I mean. No, you can't answer the question for sure. Uh, let's go back to this example. Uh, you have Mike. Uh, so I throw a die. You don't observe the result. So once again, the setup. Uh, I throw a die. I don't uh, uh, show you the result. So. I have, where is my die? Uh, poo, 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 poo. No, I don't see, oh, maybe. <laughs> okay yeah there it is okay i have thrown a die you ask me you ask me ask me the first question ask me the first question in our protocol you have a protocol uh, you should ask me the first question is the number that you get six? No. Ask me the second question. Is it more than three? More equal? No. And then I ask you a question. Is X two? Maybe. Have Maybe. So you cannot answer the question for sure. So you cannot uh, uh, determine for sure. You cannot uh, uh, be sure that x is 2 or x is not 2 so you can not um, uh, determine whether this event x is equal to 2 has happened or not happened and by the intuitive definition of sigma algebra is a list of events uh, about which uh, you are completely sure in any uh, um, in any situation you are sure whether they have happened or not happened uh, this event a x equals 2 uh, your information may be not enough to check whether a has happened maybe it's enough yeah if my answers would be different uh, then uh, it will be the other case but in the definition for sure uh okay yeah that's fine 
So any sigma, sigma algebra depends on the protocol. Yeah, obviously. Sigma algebra is a way to describe information. So I have full information. I know the result of the toss. Yeah, here it is. I know the result of the toss. So my sigma algebra, uh, my list of questions uh, that I can answer is bigger than yours because you can answer um, just a small subset of uh, um, questions. And if I observe completely, yeah, see, I observe completely the result of the toss. Oh, so yeah, I see. And obviously, sigma algebra, then my knowledge is in this particular experiment is bigger than yours. So my sigma algebra contains more events than your sigma algebra. Yeah, the main point, sigma algebra is a way to describe information of a rational agent. Masha knows whether it will rain tomorrow. Uh, and uh, Pasha knows whether it will rain tomorrow, whether the uh, dollar will be, I don't know, greater than 100 rubles tomorrow. And uh, uh, so Pasha knows more than Masha. And sigma algebra of Pasha, in this case, contains more events than the sigma algebra of Masha. So we change uh, x more than uh, or equal to 4, the sigma algebra would change. Uh, OK, let's calculate one more example. I think that will answer your question. So, OK, let's uh, calculate some more uh, examples. So let's calculate the sigma algebra in the first example. Example continued. So let's calculate it explicitly. So uh, x, uh, x equal to 6. Uh, I can answer this question. You can answer this question because you know this information by protocol. OK. What else? x is greater than uh, 3. Uh, this event, you know about it by protocol. OK. But you are a rational individual and you can do conclusions. OK. So basically this, if we describe it in terms of uh, simple events, uh, in terms of outcomes, that is one outcome six. This is just uh, outcome three, four, five, six. Yeah, if I describe in outcomes, in outcomes, this is outcome six. This is outcome three, four, five, six. Okay. If I'm rational, if I can do, you are rational, so that's your information. We start, then you can do conclusions. Uh, if you know about whether six has happened, you know about whether three, four, five, or six has happened, then you can do conclusions, yeah? You can say that x less than six. Can you, if you know about whether x is six, can you do conclusions about these events? Can you conclude that this event has happened or not happened? Yes. Yes, it hasn't yes, happened. Because basically it's the complement of it's a complement of uh, x equal to 6. So if you know about the event x, x equal to 6, then you know about the opposite event. Yeah. If you know that it will rain tomorrow, then you know whether it will not rain tomorrow. Yeah. If you are sure about that, if you know, um, just a moment. Oh. Uh, OK, so. Uh, I can conclude that one, two, three, four, and five is also in F. Let's go on. You can, uh, uh, if you are sure about, uh, let's call this event A, this event B. So if you are sure about the event A and the event B, then you can be, then you for sure know about the complement of event A, A complement. And you are sure about the event B complement. B complement is x is less than or equal to 2. Or we have only two elementary outcomes, two primitive outcomes, 1 and 2. So we need to add 1 and 2 here. OK, what else? Uh, you can, for example, if you know about A, about B, uh, you can, for example, uh, check whether a has happened, but B has not happened. Yeah, you can combine them like A intersection. No, 
B intersection A complement. Yeah, it's a combination of A and B. You can make logical conclusions. What is B intersection A complement? Three, four, five. Yeah, it's three, four, five. So we have one, two, three, four, five more. Who can provide more events, more conclusions, more logical operations? So what what we can do? Complement of this one, the last. Yeah, we can take complement of this one, B intersection AC complement. Yeah, it will be one, two, six. Okay, what else? It definitely could be any combination of numbers. Uh, not any, not any. You are wrong. So, for example, uh, you can never obtain. So let's solve it a little bit in a more systematic way. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. By no means, you have no information to distinguish four from five. Never. If I ask you whether it was four or four or, four or not four, you will never distinguish four from five uh, given your information. Because if it's not six, then it gives you no information about whether it was four or five. Uh, this, the second event B also cannot be used to distinguish four from five. So you can never uh, for sure, ask um, answer the questions whether it was four, because four, from your point of view, given your information, is indistinguishable from five. Um, and uh, uh, also, it's not distinguishable from three, yeah, because you have you have no means to distinguish three from four, yeah. No question could be oh, used to distinguish. Uh, and also some other points are indistinguishable. If you look at one and two, you can never uh, distinguish one and two. You can distinguish six from one and two because six is separated in, in your knowledge. So you have, uh, let's say three chunks, three blocks uh, that cannot be divided farther, further. So you will have all possible combinations, but not of all elementary events uh, you are right in some sense um, that we will have all the combinations, but not all the combinations from all primitive events, like one, two, three, four, four, four and six, but we will have all combinations of block. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, that's a good idea, basically. Yeah, uh, I would point that, yeah, it's very good intuition that we can combine. So we can combine in any way, but what we can combine in any way, what we can, dis uh, what we can distinguish. We can combine blocks, so all combinations, all combinations of blocks, and so now it's easily uh, to construct the whole list. The whole list will be one and two, three, four and five, six. Let's combine blocks by two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two and six um three four five and six so we have combined blocks by one by two all the three and no blocks okay so this is a full sigma algebra in this case may I ask a question please yes yes oh. yes my main advantage of a book by baldi or by the <laughs> Uh, that I can answer questions and I can uh, I can joke, but uh, anyway, everything uh, is in the books. So my, if you have questions, do not be shy. Be brave enough to ask them because that's my main idea. So if you can, my my first point, if you can go and solve all exams, uh, you can solve all. Uh, I don't know. You, 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 you go through the book by the Starniak and you say, oh, I know this book. So you are fine. So 
don't bother to spend your time during my lectures and classes. So be free. Life is good for many things, not only stochastic calculus. Yeah, but please ask your question. Okay, thank you. I will be brief then. So how did, uh, and those three first events, one, two, three, four, five, and six, how did we get them? How They're like get even them? Or, or what? So uh, my sigma algebra is a minimal sigma algebra uh, that uh, contains uh, answers to my questions. My initial questions were x uh, greater than x greater than three, oops, three, and x equal to six. So I know this information by the, const by the protocol. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a protocol, mm -hmm. what I know. So by construction, I should include these two events. Mm -hmm. And then, so let's uh, draw them. If I have nothing, so let's start, let's start very in a very primitive way. If I have no information, so let's imagine I have no information. I know the rules of the experiment. So I know that uh, the die is thrown. Okay, I know that the die is thrown, but I do not observe any result. Mm -hmm. What information do I have? I'm a rational guy that for sure, uh, I cannot distinguish these uh, uh, primitive events, outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, and six are indistinguishable for me. So for this case, when I have no information, my sigma algebra contains just two events, uh, nothing, empty set, and the full omega. Or if I write uh, in full, empty set, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the most simple sigma algebra. The, more, the minimal sigma algebra should contain two events. If I'm a rational guy, I can for sure tell that this has happened. X, if you have thrown a die, if you have a, if you have a die, if you have thrown a die, then for sure something has appeared on the die. So this event has happened. And this event has not happened. So that's a very primitive sigma algebra. So the most minimal, the primitive sigma algebra contains two events. And now let's go back to our protocol. In our protocol, I should add to this uh, chunk of all six outcomes united, I add two pieces of information. Oops, I know whether x equal to six. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I know whether three, four, so this is my new information. And then if I try to break uh, my, uh, the set of my events into non-overlapping chunks, uh, into non-overlapping blocks, I see that, let me change the, co the color probably. Uh, so I see that I can cut six, yeah, because uh, I have uh, this event x equal to six, so it's here. So I can construct the opposite of this event. Then I try to cut, uh, so basically how I obtain these three uh, blocks, I uh, check what I know and I try to, uh, uh, to see which uh, outcomes I can distinguish and which outcomes I cannot distinguish. So I will try to uh, break further. I construct um, uh, antonyms and I see that in any case, one is indistinguishable from two. On any line, one and two are linked. On any line, one, uh, three, four and five are linked. There are no questions. There are no question that could be useful for me to distinguish three from four or from five. And this is the last piece of information. So they are here. And then I blindly combine all the, uh, then I blindly 
combine everything. Okay, so first, uh, this is omega. Uh, this is my question one, x is six. This is my second question by protocol, x is greater than three. And then I combine all of them. I try to make the smallest chunks of information as possible. Basically, that's right, is that okay, yeah? Yes, yeah, so basically, depending on the answers on those two questions, uh, six yeah. equals yeah. six, six more yeah. three, or than three, and x less uh, or equal than two, we can basically obtain those two, three sets, basically. Because if we say that x is not equal to six, but it's more than three or equals, then it's either three yeah. or four or five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can Thank do you. logical operations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, uh, um, if you are, uh, uh, for example, we can state our first theorem. Yeah, our first theorem. If uh, uh, sigma algebra, sigma algebra F is uh, finite, obviously there are infinite sigma algebras. If sigma algebras is finite, then uh, it contains it contains two to the power of n events. So in our case, it contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Maybe events. you wanted to say no more than two to the power of n events. Uh, let's say two to the power of k. I have not specified what n is. Uh, I don't say that it's uh, it's not the number of. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Um, my idea was not that uh, I just take two to the power of six. It's two to some power, to oh. some power k. K, k, k is not uh, is not a num is, is a number of blocks. Yeah. So k okay, is a number is uh, the number number of chunks of indistinguishable outcomes. In my case, I have three chunks. This is the first chunk. One is indistinguishable from, from two. Three is indistinguishable from four and five. And six is, uh, is separate, yeah. So in this case, uh, the total number of outcomes is six, yeah, and uh, the number of events in, in the sigma algebra in, in, of, uh, of events in the sigma algebra is not two to the power six, yeah, it's two to the power three because I have three blocks, three chunks, okay. So this k is a number of blocks, not the number of outcomes, okay. Why it's always two to the power uh, k, where k is a number of uh, chunks because if you write chunks first, then according to the formal mathematical definition of sigma algebra, you can combine, you can take unions of uh, these uh, chunks. And basically you can, uh, for each chunk, you can either include it or not include. So you have events like plus, 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 all three chunks are included. That is uh, one, two, three, six in our case. It's like plus, minus, minus, plus. Yeah, it's like one, two, six, and so on. You have uh, you have uh, three, uh, two options for each of three points, and then you have you have eight uh, events in the sigma algebra. And the proof is uh, more or less, if you understand the logic, that you can combine. You can do rational conclusions then the proof is you, you can see it yeah you either take each chunk or either you don't take it, each chunk okay uh let's go on okay let's go on to random variables next definition First intuition, and then formal definition. So my for my idea, my main goal is to provide intuition first, because the subject is rather complex and uh, 
you can find definition in every book. So you just open the book by the stomach, you see the definition, the format. I don't like to spend my time to, but I, I will give you honest definitions, but be, uh, be sure to check the book. Uh, so first intuitive definition, the random variable X is uh, measurable, measurable, measurable with respect to sigma algebra to sigma algebra f if uh, f contains contains enough information to state the value of x to state the value of x Uh, let me provide some example. Ah, trivial example, yeah. Let's uh, continue our example. Let's continue our example. Mm, continue it. Let's, let's imagine that F is uh, uh, the sigma algebra generated by two questions, X is equal to six. X is um, greater or equal than three. Imagine a random variable Y that is equal to um, five if X is equal to six is equal to zero if X is less than six. Then two questions. First question is uh, F sufficient sufficient to find the value of Y? And the second question is F sufficient to find the value of X? Then you know the information supplied by the protocol. Can you state the value of y? Do you know the value of y? Yes. Yes, obviously, because you know whether x equal to six, then you know whether y is equal to five, okay? Yeah, because you know about the event x equals six, then you know the value of y. Just check your knowledge. If you know that x is six, then the, y, uh, the value of y is five. Yes, yes, but is your information sufficient to recover the value on the die? No. No, uh, we mean for sure, yeah? Uh, yes. Can you not to state the value of X for sure, yeah, for sure. Because sometimes you have enough information to state the value of X, but not always. Uh, so here the answer, no. Okay, so you have sufficient information to find the value of y, exact value, and you have no uh, sufficient, uh, your information is not sufficient to uh, find the value of x. So uh, we say that um, y is measurable with respect to sigma algebra f and x is not measurable with respect to sigma algebra f. Formal definition is uh, just the generalization. What does it mean? I can find the value of x. Uh, from formal mathematical point of view, you know the value of x. That means uh, that you can compare x to any number. What, what does it mean? I know, uh, I know, um, I don't know, I don't, I, I know uh, uh, the temperature today. So that means I can compare these uh, variable with any number. I can say you whether 
uh, current temperature is less than 20 degrees. I can tell you whether the current temperature is less than five degrees. I can tell you whether the current temperature is less than zero and so on. Basically, uh, if I know the value of a random variable, that exactly means that I can compare it to any number. So the formal definition is the following. Um, a random variable uh, that is uh, measurable, uh, measurable uh, with respect to sigma algebra f if uh, for any uh, real number t uh, the event um, the event that is less or equal than t belongs uh, to the set of events I know. Okay, so that means basically this definition is consistent with our intuition and it means I can compare random variable with any number if I'm able to compare random variable with any number. So basically, um, I know the value. Okay, and one small maybe notation. It's not a definition, it's notation. We say sigma of uh, uh, ABC. So if ABC uh, events, then this is the smallest, smallest sigma algebra that contains a, B, and C. And if X, Y, and Z are random variables, then sigma of X, Y, Z is the smallest sigma algebra such that X, Y, and Z are measurable. Uh, measurable with respect to it. That's a notation. So let's solve. Uh, so we have, uh, I think, seven, seven minutes. So let's solve some more exercises to better understand what it is. So imagine that uh, uh, yeah, imagine the following experiment. Imagine the following experiment. Uh, imagine the following experiment. Uh, you start at zero. And you make one uh, of the four possible steps. Either the particle goes up, either it goes uh, right, either, either it goes down, either the particle goes left. So omega consists of four elementary outcomes. Either the particle will go up, down, left, or right. And uh, just, a, just a small remark, but maybe it's important. Sigma algebras uh, have nothing to do with probabilities. Honestly speaking, uh, I need no probabilities. I need no measure to work with sigma algebras. Probabilities are necessary to describe expected, to find expected values. But uh, my point is that um, we can say, we can speak about sigma algebras and find and check whether we know something uh, without assigning probabilities. So we don't need to specify whether um, these events have the same probability or whether the, the probability is different. Is different. Um, so basically it has for the moment nothing to do with probabilities. Probabilities are necessary to calculate expected value, but we have no expected value yet. Okay, and X uh, and Y are coordinates of the particle uh, after the step. And my 
question is calculate my first question calculate sigma of x calculate uh, sigma of uh, x plus y so that is my question so let's start okay the goal is clear i'm the guy imagine uh, i'm the guy what is my knowledge i know first question i know x i do not observe completely the position of the particle but i know the x coordinate of the particle this is my information yeah uh, and if i uh, know uh, the x position of a particle then um and this is uh, right left up and down okay and if i know the x position of a particle then for sure uh, i can distinguish so let's once again use this technique uh, to uh, unite um, outcomes in uh, indistinguishable blocks yeah so if i have uh, um, uh, l u r d uh, so if i know the value of x for sure i can distinguish u from r yeah if i know the x position of a particle i can distinguish u for r so u and r are not linked but if i know the x position of a particle uh, so what should i draw here which positions are indistinguishable from me from my point of view which positions are indistinguishable yeah u and d are indistinguishable i should connect them my information is not sufficient to separate u from d uh, johnny beck is completely right uh, i have enough information if i know x to separate l from r to separate l from u and d but i have no information to separate u from d so my sigma algebra i have three chunks so my sigma algebra will once again will contain uh, eight events l u and d r and all the possible uh, all the possible unions like l r uh, l u d what else uh, l r l u d r u d empty set and uh, l u r d yeah eight events in total if for example i know the value of x plus y then which positions are indistinguishable for me if i know i know x. vice versa the L L R, maybe you know the value of the sum you don't know x you don't know y but you know only the sum only the sum so can you separate u from d can you separate u from r what can be separated what cannot be separated suppose you yes. know the sum i suppose yes because we can define whether it's negative or positive yeah you can see whether uh, so what are the possible values of, of a sum imagine this is one minus one minus one one it's one step let's introduce coordinate yeah uh, so um, so let's have the step has unique uh, unit length uh, so in this case i x plus y will be equal to one or two minus one there are no other possibilities you cannot have it two the particle uh, just does one step so you cannot have the sum equal to one uh, yeah you cannot separate u from r you cannot separate l from d and in this case the sigma algebra is uh, uh, first i will state chunks of linked uh, outcomes ld u r and all the combinations I can make logical conclusions. So all the combinations, if I have two primitive 
uh, events. What else should I write? Their combination, which is the full set and the empty set. Yeah, the empty set and the full set. So I have four events in the second case and eight events uh, in the first case. Okay, I think basically that's all. Uh, so what we have studied today, we have defined what is sigma algebra. So we have uh, described so uh, books, past exams. So if you prefer self-study, that's okay. Take a book, solve all past exams, and you are happy. Uh, what else? We have introduced sigma algebras. We have introduced what does it mean then variable x is uh, measurable uh, measurable with respect to sigma algebra. And we have introduced notation uh, sigma of event or sigma of random variable, the minimal sigma algebra that is sufficient to uh, state whether A has happened, a minimal sigma algebra, algebra that is sufficient to state the value of a random variable x. So basically that's all. If you have any questions, then uh, could you please explain why do we have L plus D? Uh, but basically how could you separate L from D? Uh, the only two values of x plus y, if the, the, the length of the step is one, the only two values are either plus one or minus one. If I say you, um, that if I say you that x plus y is equal to one, x plus y is equal to one, then you can conclude that it's either u or r has happened, but you cannot distinguish between them. Uh, if I say that x plus u is equal to minus one, then you can make a conclusion that L or D has happened, but you cannot distinguish them. That's why. Uh, may I have a question, please? Yeah. Uh, I have a question about why x plus y can be equal to two, for, for example. In our case, we do only one step. My experiment, I take a particle and just one step, how it can be two. Uh, so you mean that we can go only up, only right, only down and only left and- uh, Yes, that's written here. Clear, clear. Okay. So is, like... what, what does it mean omega is equal to? That is, a what, what is omega in uh, probability theory? It's a list of all possible uh, outcomes. So if I say omega is u, d, l, or r, so that I, I mean that there are only four possibilities. I haven't specified probabilities. I do not care about probabilities yet, but only four possibilities. And so uh, if uh, we... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so it, if we would uh, have had uh, two turns, what would be a sigma algebra for, for example, for two m movements to the up? Uh, if I, once again, what is the experiment and what information do I have? So first, what is the experiment and what information uh, do I have? So the experiment my, my... just the same as this one, but we have extra step. We have two steps now. Two steps. And what information do we have? Uh, again, we can move up, down, right, and left. No, 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 no. What you speak about omega or you speak about sigma algebra? What is I your suppose question? I, I'm speaking about omega now. If you speak about omega, then if you, uh, if, uh, so if you have two steps, you do two steps, uh, then in this case, omega will be uu, ud, ur, ul, and so on. Yes, that's what I wanted to, to understand. Thank you. Could you please explain one more time uh, the case with simply one X? 
why why don't we can why can we differentiate between between what could you please uh, move upwards a bit yeah yeah a little bit more please yeah, yeah thanks uh that the case when we were not when we couldn't differentiate between u and d so we like yeah. put it in one chunk why, why so because you know only x so what is sigma x you you know the value of x x is what x is horizontal coordinate if you know x i say what can be um, after... x x is not a okay i got it it's not a variable it's a coordinate right x is horizontal coordinate right and x y is variable horizontal. stop x the terminology x is variable x yep. is a variable x is a variable its meaning is horizontal coordinate of a particle after the first step it's a random variable mm -hmm. you say x is not variable no x is a variable and the meaning of x is horizontal coordinate of the particle after the first step mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the terminology of probability theory is very clear here x is called a random variable why it's a random variable because it uh, the value of x depends x of u is zero x of d is zero x of r is one x of l is minus one okay x is a variable mm -hmm. the value of x depends on the outcome so it's a random variable a honest beautiful powerful random variable yeah okay thank you but i see we misunderstood the the problem from the very beginning thank you thank you i got it now thank you Okay, two more questions. One question uh, from uh, Simeon. All possibilities are outcomes and all information that we know, mm, the least. So I, I, the question is, so all possibilities are outcomes. Uh, maybe the least of all, uh, so every possibility of an experiment is an outcome. So the least of all outcomes, the least of all possibilities is omega. The, it's about the first question. The second half of the question is a little bit less clearly stated. All info that we know events. No, event uh, is just uh, a, some um, uh, some subset of omega, and uh, uh, our information is described by. Um, the sigma algebra list of events so omega list of outcomes f sigma algebra list of events uh, that we are capable to distinguish whether they have happened or not one more question from uh, Johnny Beck. Could you please explain the intuition of adding one to six into previous example of sigma algebra? Um, just a moment. If I can clarify, I mean, I understood that we made the, the logical operation and got one to five, but I. I so X less, in our previous example, we know x less than two so it contains one two or six one and two we know whether x um, uh, is six so we know this we know that so we can make a conclusion whether x is less than two or x is six so this is one two or six so it's or logical operation so because this is included in sigma algebra that is included in sigma algebra we are rational we can do logical conclusion or and this belongs to our sigma algebra f uh, but uh, as soon as we answer that it's six or not we get down to one and two without six or am i, am I wrong what is your question uh, once again uh, can we answer this question? So let's imagine, let's check whether for sure we have a yes, yes possibility, no, yes, and no, no. X equal to six, X greater than three, X 
is equal to six, x is greater than three, x is equal to six, x is greater than three. Okay, if both answers were yes, can you answer my question? X belongs to this set. Can you answer? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. you have information, yes, yes. Could you answer the question, the question X belongs to one, two, or six? Yes. Does it belong? Yes. Okay. If um, answers were no, yes. Does X belong uh, belong to one, two, or six? Yeah, still belong. Does it belong? Oh, wait. Uh, no, no. No. If I answer no, no, does X belong to the set one, two, six? Yeah. Yes. So in any case, you have no doubts. Mm -hmm. The answer itself is not important. Uh, to un uh, uh, an event belongs to sigma algebra if you have enough information to check whether it has happened or not happened. The exact answer, whether it has happened or not happened, is not important. The relevant is uh, your knowledge. You know about this event. You know, you know, you know. The answer no uh, means you know about this event. So for sure, for sure, you are, uh, you know about this event, let's call it C for simplicity. Uh, so for sure, you, you know about the event C, whether it has happened or not. So C belongs to the sigma algebra F, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, so bye-bye. See you next time. If you have any questions, uh, just be brave and ask me. Uh, be sure to look through future exams, stochastic calculus part. I will ask uh, Kirill Sanch about uh, what has changed with optimal control this year. But basically, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, this is not my sigma algebra, uh, the uh, optimal control part. So basically, I may be wrong about this part. Okay, but I will, to be precise, I will check this and include uh, this knowledge in my Sigma algebra. So I have a nice uh, weekend, uh, so a, a nice, um, a nice uh, evening. Yes, I will uh, upload uh, PDF notes uh, to Telegram and maybe to the information system if I have enough time. Uh, and I will provide you a link to video recordings by uh, Zoom. Okay, bye bye. Uh, may, I have, bye. may I have a one small question yeah. about uh, sigma al al yeah. algebra? Uh, so, algebra. Uh, so, uh, so, suppose that we know that uh, in our sigma algebra, uh, there, there is an event one, two, six, and there is an event one, two. Uh, can we uh, obtain that separate even? even six is in our sigma algebra. Yes, uh, it depends on the, it depends on, uh, so you have one, two in your sigma algebra, you have one, two, six uh, in your sigma algebra. And it because you have not described the experiment uh, by, uh, 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 you have not described the experiment. Maybe you are working with a, let's say, 10-sided die, die, yeah? But in any way, even if you have not described the, event, the setup of the experiment, for sure, obviously, if this A... It's, it's just B, uh, for our, our task with uh, six, uh, yeah, yeah, six... Yeah, but my point is that even this is not important. This is not important. Even if I wo work with 10-sided die, so for sure, I can make logical uh, deduction. So, and I can say that B intersection A complement belongs to F, but B intersection A complement is just six. So six belongs to F. 
uh, in the definition of sigma algebra, you can combine um, events in any way. Complements, unions, intersections, you are free to do anything. In formal mathematical definition, you have only unions because uh, using unions and complements, you can construct intersections, symmetric difference, difference, and any set operation is can be constructed using unions and complements. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, thank you for the answer. No, now it is clear. Okay, best wish for all of us. Uh, be healthy uh, and uh, uh, and study sigma algebras. Bye bye. <laughs>